today I'm going to show you how you can use Gadget as middleware and forward Shopify information to an existing service or ERP using Google Cloud tasks to manage any rate limits or retry configuration. I'm going to start by creating a new Gadget app. I'll just call it middleware example. Perfect. So this gives me my Gadget app. That's my Postgres database, my serverless node backend, as well as a React front end. We're not going to worry about the front end for this tutorial. First thing I'm going to do is connect to Shopify. I'm going to go through the partners dashboard. We always recommend you go through the partners dashboard. Oh, looks like I'm already in an app here. I'm going to just go ahead and create a new one. So middleware example. Perfect. And I'm just going to copy the client ID and secret back over to Gadget. Fantastic, press connect. On this page, I select what Shopify API scopes and models I wanna import in my Gadget app. Because this is a middleware example, I'm gonna be selecting what resources I want to forward onto my existing service ERP. So I'm just gonna go ahead and select orders. I just need access to the read scope because I'm not gonna be writing anything back to Shopify. And I'm gonna go ahead and select the Shopify order data model I'm not only going to be sending that order information, I'm actually going to be sending the entire orders webhook payload. So I just need access to the order model to be able to do that. I'll scroll down and press confirm. Because orders is one of the data models that is covered by Shopify's protected customer data access policy, I have to go ahead and fill out this form in the partner's dashboard. So I just go back here, click on app setup, Scroll down to the very bottom, protected customer data access. I'm gonna go ahead and request access. This banner is really important. Only apps that are distributed on the app store need to submit their access for review. So if you're just building a custom app for a single merchant, forwarding from one store to an existing ERP, you don't really need to worry about what you're selecting here because it's not reviewed. I'm just gonna go ahead and select app functionality and save that. That will allow me to register for the orders webhooks. If you do need access to these specific customer fields here, you do make sure that you fill these out individually as well. I'm not going to do that. I will just go back to the app setup page and then I'll copy over my app URL and redirection URL. And once I've done this, I am just going to install my app on a development store. And I'm going to make sure to install on a store where I have enabled checkouts or test checkouts. Let's go ahead and select a store, checkout branding testing. No auth code once again with Gadget. All you need to do is hit the big green install app button and your app will be installed on a store. Perfect. So we're installed, we're ready to go. If I flip back to Gadget here, we got this banner that says we've successfully connected, which is fantastic. We see we've mirrored Shopify resources. So we have the Shopify order data model as well as sync GDPR and shop models, which are defaults we add automatically for you when you connect. The two important pieces for this tutorial are that we've registered webhooks for Shopify events and set up a sync API. So this will allow us to keep track of incoming orders and then forward them to my existing service. Finally, we've installed an embedded admin front end, which is just what you're seeing right here. If you go into the front end folder, shop page JSX specifically, I'm not gonna to touch on that for this tutorial. I'm gonna go ahead and close this banner. Now I'm gonna use Google Cloud Tasks to enable me to build queues that have certain rate limit and retry properties so that if I'm doing a large data sync or could potentially see a large spike in incoming webhooks, I'm not just forwarding them as fast as I can to my existing service because that might take my service down. Google Cloud Tasks enables me to build a queue that deals with any sort of rate limits or retry configuration. And this means that all of the information I forward from Gadget to my existing service or ERP will actually make sure it gets there without taking down that service or overwhelming it. So I'm gonna go ahead and set up my Google Cloud project now. I've just signed up for a Google Cloud account and I'm gonna go ahead and create a new project here. 
I'll just call it gadget middleware. Perfect. I'm gonna leave my organization as gadget.dev as well as my location and I will create this project. So we can see it's being created here. I will select this project once it has been created. Fantastic. And now I'm gonna enable access to the Cloud Tasks API. So I'll just go ahead, I search for Cloud Task, I already had it typed in. So I have to press enable. If you haven't entered billing information, you'll need to do that now. There is a generous free tier, so if you're just testing this out, you don't have to worry about being charged on your card. And fantastic. So it looks like the API was indeed enabled. I'm just gonna go and build my first queue now. So I'm actually gonna go back to the Cloud Tasks page and we're gonna deal with enabling authorization a little later. Just close this banner. Oh, error occurred. Let's just try that again. There we go, nice and speedy this time. So I'm gonna go ahead and just create a push queue. I'm gonna give a queue a name. I'll just call it my queue for now. I keep it simple. US Central 1 will be the region. Now, these advanced settings are the interesting parts because it allows you to set some rate limit and retry configuration properties. So this is where if you do have some sort of rate limit on your existing service, you can tweak these values to make sure you're not overwhelming it when you're forwarding information from Shopify through Gadget to your service. I'm just gonna leave the default configurations for now. Google has lots of documentation on what all these different fields mean, so you can look that up for yourself. I'm gonna go ahead and press create now, which will create my queue. Fantastic, so you see we have a queue created now. If I go back, I can see, yep, it is indeed created. That's fantastic. The next thing we need to do is create a service account which will allow us to actually use this queue from our gadget project. So queue up tasks that are then managed by this queue. So I'm gonna create a service account. I will give it a name. I'm just gonna call it my service account for simplicity. This does generate an email address that we're gonna use shortly. And you can enter description if you want. Use to forward tasks from gadget slash Shopify to my existing service. Fantastic. I will create and continue. You do need to select two different roles for this service account. So one is a cloud tasks in queuer. Awesome. And there's another role, which is a, I'll just grab it here, service account user. And there we go. So you need to add these two roles. You can press continue. Fantastic. You can grant other users access to the service account. I'm not gonna do that now. I'm just gonna press done. Great, so we've created our service account. Last thing I'm gonna do in this cloud console is generate a key, a private key I can use to initialize the client, which we'll, we'll set up in Gadget and then forward these tasks to my queue. So I'll add a key, create a new key. I'm gonna select JSON. This will actually download a JSON file to your local machine. I'm just gonna open that up here and fantastic. So I need this private key. I will paste this in Gadget shortly. So the next thing we're gonna do is create a whole bunch of environment variables in Gadget to handle all these things we just created. So I'm gonna go back to my gadget project now, click on settings, go to my environment variables, and I'm gonna start adding these. I am just gonna copy the name from the written tutorial. Watching me type out a whole bunch of environment names isn't that interesting, but we'll start with the Google Cloud service account private key. So I can just copy all the text from this private key here and paste it in. I can also encrypt it with this lock so that it is no longer accessible. I will click add variable. 
This is gonna be the service account email that was generated. So if I go back here and close this, go back to my service account, if you say this is the email, Google even gives you a little way to copy it, which is nice. Let's paste that in here. The next one will be the project ID. So once again, you can see it here, just clicking on this dropdown. This is the project ID. Mine is just called gadget middleware. Great. There is gonna be the queue name. Awesome. So we can go back to, I'm just gonna go back to cloud tasks. And my queue name was just my queue. And then the last, well, second to last one, last Google Cloud environment variable is just the location. So this is just US Central one right here. Now there's one more environment variable I'm gonna set, and that will be for the location of my external service or my target service URL. So for this demo, I'm actually just using a request bin. So I'm just gonna go ahead and copy this URL. This will allow me to actually inspect the forwarded request and I will paste in that URL. So that's all the environment variables I need to set up. Now I can actually write some code and initialize the Google client. So next thing I'm gonna do, open up the command prompt in gadget and I will go yarn add Google Cloud Tasks. And this will install the package into my package.json as well as all the dependency files into node modules. And this will allow me to use the uh, Google Cloud Task client to queue tasks from Gadget. I'll just give this a minute to finish installing. Green check mark looks good. If I go to my package.json, I see Google Cloud Tasks, so we're good to go on. So I'm just going to create a code effect on my Shopify order create action. So every time I create a new order, I'm going to forward the webhook payload to this request bin. So I'll go ahead and add a code snippet as a success effect. I'm just going to go ahead and copy and paste a block of code from the written tutorial, paste it in, and then walk through it. There we go. So all we're doing here is we're importing the tasks client from our dependency. We're setting up this client using the service account email as well as the, oh, let's go process.env. Just a bit of an error with the copy there. Oh, these are all gonna be like that. Here we go. Perfect, okay, that's better. So we're just using the email account and the private key to set up our tasks client. And then in our actual action, we are using this trigger property, which will be the entire request payload or webhook payload. And we're gonna forward that information. So we check to make sure that the trigger is either a webhook or a sync. And then we're calling this create HTTP task function that I created. And once again, we're setting that entire payload as well as just a reference to the logger so we can log some things as we go. In this function, I am just, oh, let's copy this here. Ah, it only copies over one, that's why. Perfect. So we're just grabbing our environment variables here and setting them to local variables. Now, the default example does have a 60 second delay. I'm actually just gonna lower that for this demo so that I'm not sitting around for a minute later. But this will just delay it in the queue and will allow us to actually examine the queue. When you're actually building your own middleware service, you might not want this delay because you probably wanna push things to the queue as fast as you can. So we use some of our variables to actually create this reference to the parent, which is once again, through the Cloud Task client. A lot of this code is pulled directly from the Google Cloud Task example that is linked to in our tutorial. 
we create a new task and this is using the target service URL. So it's gonna be a post request that sends along some JSON. We take our webhook payload, add it to a body of the request. And then once again, this is this delay. So we are adding a scheduled time, a delay of 15 seconds. So it'll sit in the queue for 15 seconds and then be forwarded to this target URL. Finally, at the bottom here, we're just formatting our request. We are using the client to create this task, and then we're logging both the request and the response. So that's all we need to do. Let's go ahead and try it out by creating an order. And we should see a task in our queue, and then we should see the actual request pop up in the request bin. Just go ahead and open my store here. Let's go ahead and buy a snowboard. Buy it now, let's get through this checkout as quickly as possible. Awesome, already have some info saved. This is just the bogus payment gateway that I'm using, so this is good for testing. And I'll press pay now. So perfect, my order is confirmed. If I go to my queue here, fantastic. So I can see I do have a task in my queue if I click on it, I can actually see the payload of my queue, which is the webhook. If I flip back to gadget, so it's gonna sit in that queue for that 15 seconds. So I can see that I did indeed create the task. So that's from the logger state in, in my code file. And there we go. So it looks like the task has now been handled. If I go to my request bin, I see, yep, this is the current time. So this was my request. And I can see this is my incoming information. If I open up the body, I can see that this was, yep, the orders updated actually webhook. So it was a Shopify webhook that came in on this shop. And if I open up the payload, this is all of my order information that is included with the webhook. So that's fantastic. It's exactly what we want. And it's a great way to use Gadget as middleware between your existing service and Shopify. You can also do everything that I did in the Google Cloud Console using a G Cloud CLI tool. I don't have instructions for that, but there are lots of instructions and examples on Google's own website. If you have any questions about this tutorial, hop in our developer Discord and ask myself or the Gadget community. Until next time, I hope you keep building more and coding less with Gadget.